Hello everybody, welcome. Today is the day, and by the day I mean the day that I finally, finally read the last book in what is probably my favorite series. I have several favorite series, but I'd like to consider this one of my all-time favorite series. And that is, of course, none other than the An Ember in the Ashes series. So today I'm going to be reading A Sky Beyond the Storm, which is the final book, the fourth book in this series. It's the finale. And I have been putting this off. <laughs> this book came out in like early December. It's now early January. And to be fair, I have put other books off for much longer than that, but I know I need to read this book immediately because I have been trying to avoid spoilers for long enough. And at this point, I know I'm just gonna get spoiled and it's just gonna be really bad and I'm gonna be really sad about it. So I have to finally just sit down and read this book. So that's my plan for the day. And I plan on vlogging the entire experience and journey and uh, probably all the tears I'm going to cry while I read this book. Like I mentioned, it is one of my all-time favorite series. I would call it like my favorite series. It's up there. It's in the category with like all the other favorite series, so they're all favorites, so they're all my all-time favorite. Don't judge me. This is how I rank things. <laughs> but anyway, I love this series with my whole heart. I love these characters so much. They are some of my all-time favorite fictional characters that I feel very deep attachments to. So I'm very sad to see this story come to an end. Obviously, it has to end at some point. And I just feel like this is just gonna be sadness from chapter to chapter. And I'm not prepared for it, but I can't wait to just sob. <laughs> I made a video very similar to this one when I read Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare last year. And I basically just vlogged my entire experience of reading the book. Hence, there are gonna be a lot of spoilers in this video. So if you've never read the Ember in the Ashes series, first of all, go fix that, go read the entire series uh, because it's so good. But if you don't feel like reading it, if you have no intention of reading this series, but you just wanna see me like cry and probably just lose my mind slowly over these characters and whatever's gonna happen to them, probably a lot of death, <laughs> then feel free to stay tuned. But just know you've been warned, the entire video is gonna be completely spoiler filled for the entire series. But even if you do end up watching this entire video and just like seeing me cry and none of it makes sense to you, I still recommend you go and read the series because I think it's really good and absolutely worth everyone's time in one of the best YA series out there, so yes. But before we get any further into this video, I do quickly want to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of different classes on pretty much any subject you can think of. If you have any New Year's resolutions or goals to learn something new or to develop a skill that you already have or to just structure your time a bit better, taking a Skillshare class can definitely help with that and can help give you the structure that you'll need at the beginning of the new year to start off your year right. One of my biggest goals for 2021 is to create more content on YouTube consistently and create the content I really want to make. So I've been taking this course by Nathaniel Drew called Creativity Unleashed, Discover, Hone, and Share Your Voice Online, all about content creation and creativity online, which like I mentioned, is something that I really want to focus on in this year. So taking this course has been really helpful to actually motivate me to stay consistent with my own content and continue making the content I want to make. If you're interested in trying out Skillshare for yourself, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Members and after that, it's only around $10 a month. So once again, a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and without any further ado, let's get back into the vlog. So I quite honestly have little memory of what happened in the last book, Reaper at the Gates, because it's been like two plus years at this point. It's been some time. I did a whole book review for it, so I know I like took a lot of notes and like had a lot of in-depth thoughts on it, but uh, I don't remember anything because, um, I, my memory sucks at this point. <laughs> I remember finding out the truth about Cook being Lia's mom. I remember that Elias has essentially like entirely become a Grim Reaper or whatever it is. And Helene tore her mask off and the mask was like the last key to the thing that the Nightbringer is trying to like put together. I don't remember exactly. Can you tell that like I've lost a lot of this? It's been a while. <laughs> but I do remember at least some major plot points and I remember being heartbroken and I feel like that's just gonna happen all over again in this one except 10 times worse. So uh, without any further ado, let's just start reading the book. So the thing is I don't have a physical copy of the book. I'm gonna end up having to listen to this entire thing on audiobook, which makes me sad because I ordered my book and then it didn't come um and I was gonna order another one but I was just like too upset about the other book not arriving to me and I didn't have time to order a second one so I ended up just downloading the audiobook instead so I've got the audiobook so we're just gonna listen to this book instead which I'm okay with I've listened to parts of the audiobooks for the other ones before and I liked the narrator so I'm excited to start it this way anyway it'll be a different experience um unfortunately I won't be able to read it as quickly which is a little bit frustrating because I read faster than I can listen to an audiobook but 
nonetheless, it's still gonna be fine. I can't wait, I just can't wait. I just, I need to know what's gonna happen to Elias and Laya. Like, as we all know, they're what I'm here for. They're what I've always been here for. I love them so much. If they don't get a happy ending, <laughs> you're just gonna watch me sob for like, an hour. <laughs> anyway, um, it's about lunchtime right now and I'm really hungry, so I'm gonna go and get some food and start listening to the book while I do that. So let's go, let's start. Let's start this emotional journey of me losing my mind slowly. I can't wait. <laughs> okay, so I have listened to about an hour of the audiobook so far and it's 17 hours, which is really long. <laughs> I thought I'd be able to finish this today, definitely not gonna be able to finish this today considering it's already 2 p.m. So it's gonna take me probably at least another day. I'll probably finish it tomorrow. So far, not a lot has happened since I'm like only a few chapters in anyway, but the main thing that has happened is that I now remember things. <laughs> Elias has completely become the soul catcher. That was the word I could not remember earlier because it had been too long. Um, but he has like completely become the soul catcher now and he has forgotten that he was Elias. Elias is dead because he technically is dead. But Keenan came back, AKA the Nightbringer came back, but came back as Keenan. And she had some like mixed feelings about that. My feelings are that he's the Nightbringer and uh, he needs to die. But he came back as Keenan, like not as the Nightbringer. And that was like the first time we've seen him as Keenan since Torch, I think, since Torch Against the Night, I think so. And now we're not exactly sure what's going on there. Who's gonna die? Is anyone gonna die? I don't know. My bet's on no one yet because we're way too early on in the story. But then with Elias, we have one of the augers. I can't remember exactly how you pronounce it. He's like talking to him and he's telling like the soul catcher, you are Elias Vitorius. You have to remember who you are. We need you for this war. So like, I'm really hoping that he remembers early on. I really don't want to spend this entire book waiting for Elias to like realize he's still Elias and like come back to life. I really don't know how this is gonna work because like he's dead, kind of, basically. He's not Elias. So like how is he gonna remember that he's Elias? I need him to remember that he's Elias <laughs> and I need him and Maya to be reunited. That's what I need. So yeah, that's basically all that's happened so far. Like I said, just an hour into it so far. Still got a long way to go and we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hopefully some big things start happening soon. <laughs> Hello everyone, good morning. So it's actually the next day. Um, I didn't make too much progress with my reading yesterday because I ended up filming my other video and um, editing that and stuff super late last night. So I was up pretty late doing a lot of work, but I did make a little bit more progress and we have finally reached what I have been waiting for. Well, kind of what I've been waiting for. Elias and Laia are finally reunited, except he's still the soul catcher and like doesn't really remember his old self. And she's just like trying to convince herself that like he is the soul catcher. Elias is dead, Elias is dead. Like this is the soul catcher, it's not Elias. And I'm suffering a little. Uh, a lot because it's making me super sad because I just want them to be happy and I want them to be together as themselves but who knows if that's gonna happen um but at least for now they are like kind of reunited so that's the point that I'm at right now I don't know what chapter that is I think I just started part two of the book to be honest so far um the book has been a little bit slow I'm still like not super super far into it with the speed I'm listening at six hours and 37 minutes left so like still a long way to go but so far I'm about like three hours into the book my plan is to finish this 100% finish this book by tonight so that I can finally know what actually happens and as for like what I'm going to be doing um mostly just like cleaning my room and stuff which I feel like I do this in every single vlog and you're probably thinking like Hannah how's your room this messy all the time I don't know I don't go anywhere or do anything but yet there's like a stack of clothes on my chair like every other day I also need to upload the video that I um, finished editing yesterday so I've got to do that which is good because I finished like editing so like don't have to listen to myself talking so um, while I do like all of that other stuff um, respond to some emails and stuff I can just listen to the book and I feel like I'll definitely be able to finish it today so uh yeah I'm just gonna bring you along as I do all of that and I am super super excited so yeah I'll update you once I get to another exciting part of the book once something major happens again and let you know how things are going so let's go read some more let's find out what happens to my favorite characters let's see how much I cry maybe I won't cry like maybe this will end up being okay. Cause like so far it's making me like a little emotional because like I care about the characters, but like no tears yet, no tears. But I'm probably jinxing myself. We'll see. <laughs> I just got 
got to chapter or part two of the book and read chapter 15, the soul catcher chapter. Okay. <laughs> That is what I've been waiting for, for our like first step to getting back to Elias and Laya. And it was so satisfying. The angst, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> the whole like satisfy you conversation. I, wow. <laughs> Elias is like slowly kind of starting to remember things and then like pushing everything else down because he's supposed to just be the soul catcher and like not remember these things and it's killing me and I just want him to remember. She ended up leaving her brother and everyone else um, to follow Elias because everyone was like, Elias is like essential to this. We need him to help defeat the Nightbringer. Like we need to figure out what this whole like secret is with the Nightbringer and why he needs Elias. And Laya knows that she like cares too much about him too to not help him and not try and get him back and like try and get him to remember so yeah, she ends up following him and now she's with him in the waiting place. I think that's what it's called. Hopefully he starts to get some of his memories back and starts to become more Elias and less soul catcher. We'll see. <laughs> now I've moved on to a blood strike chapter. So let's see what's up with Helene. Last we saw her, she was getting like shot at with arrows or something. So um, hopefully she's okay. I do want to say, I feel like I've mentioned in like previous videos where I've talked about Number in the Ashes. Helene is like not my favorite character. I know a lot of people love Helene. I like low key hate Helene. It's like not even low key. I like kind of hate her. But since A Reaper at the Gates, I have been more partial to her. Like I do like her a bit more than I used to. And in this one so far, she hasn't been in it too much. But in this one so far, I do like Helene a bit more so um she is growing on me slightly I don't want anything bad to happen to her but like I'm hoping she continues to improve I'm gonna continue reading I just needed to update about that specific chapter chapter 15 was a lot and I'm so excited to keep going uh yeah I can't wait to just cry some more and I'm currently just working on exporting my video and making my thumbnail and stuff so that I can upload it soon so yeah multitasking we love that. Yeah, anyway, I'm gonna get back to reading and I'll update again soon. Okay, <laughs> literally right as they get reunited, they spend like some time together, maybe a week, and he leaves her again. I hate this. <laughs> so something happens while they're in the waiting place and Laya's like, there's something wrong with the waiting place and the ghosts are trying to tell you that it's me, but it's not me. And then there's like a djinn or something that shows up and there's something going on with the waiting place. Like the ghosts are scared, everyone's like freaking out and Elias, the soul catcher, is like, no, you have to go. So he takes Laya out of the waiting place and like, leaves her on some street corner basically and then he's like there's nothing wrong with the waiting place but the voice inside his head is like if you leave Laya there she's just gonna die like you have to go save her and he's like no I'm the soul catcher until he finally realizes that there is literally something wrong with the waiting place and she was right she wasn't just like making that up so now he has to figure out what it is but again they were reunited for like three seconds like three seconds and now they're separated again I just, I know that this is an Ember in the Ashes book and like I have to suffer and there has to be pain, but I just like want them to be happy and together for more than like five seconds. And together when they both like remember each other, you know, when they're both Elias and Laya, not when he's the soul catcher and she's like, stop being the soul catcher, you know? You know, why can't we just have nice things? That's what I want. Anyway, I have to go back to another Helene chapter. I know I'm literally only talking about what's going on with Elias and Laya, but like I have my priorities in this series and that is Elias and Laya's well-being. So like you can take that up with um, no one because I will not be taking any comments. <laughs> also at one point in this, like her sister was like, remember when I freed all the scholar slaves and then you were mad at me? And um, she was like, yeah. And, like, I feel like everyone else forgets that. Like remember when Helene's sister freed all the slaves and Helene was mad at her because she didn't want to free the slaves? Like, why do people like Helene so much? That's my question. I just, I want to know. All right, we just had our first major-ish, not major, but like named character death. Ferris just died. Sad. Um, I mean, I think he died. I don't think he's gonna come back to life. I don't think that's gonna be some kind of like plot twist or something. And Helene's trying to not die right now. And hopefully she makes it out of this. But yeah, Ferris just died. Also quickly wanted to check in because I just like had this epiphany that I like completely forgot about. I forgot that Harper 
is Elias's half brother. I forgot that we found that out in the last book and I just remember that right now. So yeah, I'm wondering what's gonna happen with that. I'm wondering where that's gonna go. Elias currently has been trying to figure out what's going on with the waiting place and what's going on with the djinn and stuff and the djinn have like kidnapped um, Laia as well and they're holding her hostage. So there's like a lot going on at once. Like I feel like everybody is like in the middle of some separate battle. Like there are multiple different battles happening at once or multiple different like major problems like kidnapping, war, escaping death. It, so much is happening at once. I feel like the beginning of this book started off like a little bit slow and now we've just gotten into like chaos mode and I'm not even halfway through. So like I don't even know where we're gonna go from here. Anyway, just wanted to mention we've had our first death and now I'm concerned for what's to come. I feel like we're gonna enter like a little bit of a slow period and then something else is gonna happen. I just don't know what that's gonna be yet. I don't know what it's gonna be and it better not be the death of one of my favorite characters. Otherwise I'm gonna be so sad. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Elias was like, the Nightbringer must be using the ghosts from the waiting place for something. He's using them for something and I have to figure out why. So I'm gonna go find the Nightbringer and he finds the Nightbringer. And who does the Nightbringer have? Laia. And he is like holding her hostage. And then Elias is like, well, I have to save her. But then the soul catcher part of him is like, why? She's just some random girl. And then the Elias part of him is like, no, she's not, she's Laia. And he's just like fighting with himself and he has finally made the decision. He made the decision to save her. He made the decision to save her because she is Laia and I think, I think, I think he's finally gonna become Elias again. We're still so early on in this book and I just, I just need it to happen, okay? I just need it to happen. I have been crying about the fact that Elias turned into the soul catcher for like three years. <laughs> Two years? When did the last book come out? Two years ago? And I love Elias and I have just wanted him to be happy for so long and he's been so miserable since like book one. They've all been miserable since book one to be fair but like if he finally becomes Elias again and stops being the soul catcher I'm gonna be so happy. I'm gonna be so happy. It's all I want. It's all I want. Okay anyway I'm going back to listening. I just I want to finish this like immediately and I'm still not even halfway through. I just want my favorite characters to be okay. Why is that too much to ask for? <laughs> Sorry quick update. I'm listening to the Helene chapter and Helene literally just 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 this is why I don't understand why people like her just now realized that maybe the empire was bad maybe everything that they did caused people so much pain like maybe Laia was right this entire time that enslaving her people was wrong and she finally like fully had this epiphany she's like Laia understood this pain Laia understood what this was like and she was right about it all along it took you long enough it literally took this girl three books three and almost a half books to finally understand that enslaving people, abusing power, colonizing land is wrong. Someone explain to me why everyone likes Helene so much. Someone explain to me why everyone was rooting for Helene this entire time. Because she has always been self-righteous and she's always been part of the evil of this story. Like I know she like kind of starts getting her redemption arc and that's like nice and everything, but why was everyone always on her side? Like I don't hate her as much now. Like I'm glad she's like learning things and progressing. Like took you long enough. I don't know why it took you so long to understand that enslaving people is wrong, but I'm glad you finally did. I just don't get what's so appealing about a self-righteous person in a position of power abusing that power and not believing that it's wrong. And like, yeah, you can say she was like brainwashed by the empire, but like how brainwashed? Elias figured out the enslaving people is wrong very quickly. In the beginning of book one, he already thought that what the empire was doing was wrong. And he was the son of the commandant. So like, Helene has no excuse. She has no excuses. Anyway, that's my rant about Helene. That's just how I feel. That's how I feel. Glad the girl finally came to her senses. Glad she finally agrees that enslaving people is wrong. But it took her so long. It took her so long. Anyway, <laughs> it's just that she's literally like dying. And she's like, wow, maybe everything I was taught was wrong. Maybe I wasn't the hero. Maybe we were the villains the entire time. You Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'll never get it. Anyway, I, I don't think she's gonna die, but at least she finally learned her lesson. <laughs> at least she learned her lesson. Elias, 
Elias is like Loki Elias again. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I had to pause mid chapter because I literally just, I can't emotionally prepare myself for this. He's kind of Elias again and he's regretting it and trying to go back to being the soul catcher and trying to go back to the waiting place and like get away from Laya even though he just saved her from the Nightbringer and he doesn't like know what to do with himself and like I said I paused mid chapter because I just like needed to pace around my room for a second because oh my god <laughs> this is what I have been waiting for what I've been waiting for okay I need to go back I need to go back to it and see when it happens <laughs> I'm so upset. <laughs> he became Elias again. And they had their moment. They kissed for the first time in like 84 years. And then he just became the soul catcher again. I, I can't do this. I can't do this. The number of times they have been separated. It's killing me. <laughs> I just want them to be happy. I just want them to be happy. Why? Why are we here? Just to suffer. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to reading. <laughs> All right, hello. So we are in my kitchen now. I ended up taking a little bit of a break from reading because I just needed to do some last minute like sound editing on my video and stuff. So had to pause the audiobook for a minute, um, but my video is finally exporting, which is great. I'm doing things, I'm getting things done today while also reading this book. It's so nice, <laughs> but it is now 1 p.m. and I'm very hungry. So I'm gonna make lunch while I listen to some more of the book. I'm about halfway through at this point. A lot of things are starting to happen. Things are falling into place. I feel like we're gearing up for war at this point. I mean, that's what everyone keeps telling Elias as well. The augurs, the gym, they're like, war is your past, present, and future. So like, we've seen his past and his present. So like, war is the only inevitable outcome. So can't wait for that. Um, it's gonna be a bloodbath. But yeah, I'm very excited to continue. I'm really enjoying it right now. I haven't been like this invested in a book in a while, which is so nice and so refreshing. I'm gonna make myself some lunch, continue to listen, and I will update once some more intense things happen. <laughs> important plot developments we have learned. The Nightbringer was in love with the queen of the Jinn, but she betrayed him and that's why he's trying to get revenge on everyone. So like that's why the Nightbringer is doing everything from what I understand so far. So things are starting to make a bit more sense and Laia is currently talking to the queen of the Jinn, former queen of the Jinn, um, and like figuring out this entire situation. So yeah, just general plot developments that I have now learned that um, have cleared things up a little bit because I have been so confused about the Nightbringer's plan this entire time. Everything he does makes literally no sense. Now it makes a little bit more sense, at least for now. We'll see. I feel like there's still so much that he's planning that we like don't even know about and I'm concerned <laughs> for everyone's sake. Chapter 39. kind of call me by your name shit is this? <laughs> that mango scene. That killed me. I don't think I can eat a mango again. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Why is it that every single time they kiss though, Elias just like has to leave. He just leaves. He just becomes the soul catcher again entirely. And he's like, no, peace, bye. I'm going, I'm leaving, I'm gone. I just, I just want him to be Elias again. Why is this so hard? <laughs> that was a lot though. That was really good. That scene was really good. I'm, I don't think I need a mango again though. <laughs> okay, some updates. Helene and Harper finally got together. That took so long, um, but I'm glad they both have some happiness. That's good. But <laughs> I spoke too soon because um, Livia just died. And I was not expecting that. And I wasn't expecting to feel as sad about it as I am because as we know, I'm not Helene's biggest fan, but I do love her sister because she was great. She freed all the scholar slaves and like, 
now she's dead and Helene's gonna lose it. Helene's like not gonna be able to handle this. Um, and I don't know what this is gonna lead to, but there's so much drama. I feel like this entire book so far, every chapter has literally just been like battle after battle after battle. Like every single chapter ends with one of the characters getting wounded for some reason or another. And it just like hasn't stopped. Like no joke, the past like 10 chapters in a row at least, like they have all ended with someone getting like hurt almost fatally. And it's a lot, like so much is happening. I'm sad, I'm so sad. I didn't think she would die. But I have no faith that like anyone's gonna survive this. Like I'm just convinced everyone's gonna die. So I'm just like living in denial right now while they're still alive. I'll take like any little bit I can get of them being happy. There haven't been that many scenes besides that one mango scene. <laughs> Elias remembered what he said to her that night. <laughs> Chapter 55. Holy shit. You are my temple, you are my priest, you are my prayer, you are my release. He said it. Oh. <laughs> and I am deceased. Dude. Dude. <laughs> Chapter 55 and 56. This is insane. This is insanity. Goodbye. Um, have I been waiting literally the past three books for this moment? Yes, I have been. I had to pause it because I just, I know that this is just gonna end with one of them disappearing, having to run away, getting nearly killed or actually killed. And I just, I wanna savor this moment. I need to savor this moment right now. Cause like, we're not gonna get it back. We're still far enough away from the end. Like there's too much left for nothing major to happen. So I just, I don't trust it. I don't trust any of this. I don't trust the happiness that we feel in this moment. Cause it's just gonna be taken away. <sighs> They love each other so much and they have for so long and quite literally every possible obstacle you can think of, including a shape-shifting demon, has prevented them from being together. And I just, they deserve this. And I know that we're gonna have it ripped away from us. I hate it. I'm gonna finish this. I don't wanna finish it. But God, this scene is so good. <laughs> she just said, we have to win because this cannot be the only night we spend together. I, I love Laya. I love her. I love her. And she's so right. Like, girl, you have to win. You have to win because you guys do deserve to have a life together. What was all the pain for if you don't get to enjoy something? You know, I just, <laughs> I'm so upset. Okay, I'm gonna go back to reading. I need to finish this. It's killing me. The, like the fifth time I've paused on these chapters. <laughs> Elias knows that after this he has to go back to being the soul catcher and that this is all that they can have and that last kiss was so desperate. It was so desperate. And God, the pain I am feeling right now. <laughs> this is what I wanted. This is what I signed up for. I know, but I'm still regretting my decisions. <laughs> Why did I ever read this book in the first place? <laughs> I wanna be like, everything's gonna be okay. It's all gonna be fine. But like, it's not gonna be fine. Like, I know it's not gonna be fine. I'm here to suffer, you know? I'm, I'm literally just here to suffer. It's fine. It's not. It's not fine at all. But I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> okay, well, hold on. Did Harper just die? Is that what just happened? I, I think he just died. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, but like Harper and Helene just got together and like for the first time I like actually wanted good things for Helene. And now Harper's gonna die? Please tell me he doesn't die. I'm gonna be so sad. No. No. Did Harper really just die? He has to be okay. Helene's like not gonna recover from this. I mean, she's already got like a lot of issues, but like this is like gonna kill her. Wow, I really didn't think I'd be this sad over Harper dying, but like I'm really sad about it. I have to keep going. I have to know what happens. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I need to pause, I need to pause. Did Darren just die too? <laughs> Are you kidding me? The Nightbreaker just snapped his neck, snapped his neck. I can't, I can't. You can't, no, no, 
No. No. What? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, I need like several moments. Hold on. <laughs> I've once again ended up on the floor in my room because this is just where I always end up when things get too dramatic. But oh my god, hold on. You can't kill Darren and Harper. I, I can't do that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? It's just because like this whole series started with Laya trying to save her brother and now her brother dies. <laughs> and I, <sighs> I'm so upset. I'm so sad. I have to keep listening. <laughs> I hate this. I have so little left of this book. There are 48 minutes left. What the hell is supposed to happen in the next 48 minutes? This like isn't- this is not gonna end well. This isn't gonna end well. I- I can't do this. I can't do it. I can't do it. But I'm gonna do it. Okay, let's go. <laughs> and now Lia's gonna do it. Lia's gonna kill the Nightbringer even though she shouldn't kill the Nightbringer. Oh, she's gonna kill him. Oh, she's gonna kill him. This is gonna kill me. <laughs> Laya just takes the scythe and slashes the Nightbringer. That's incredible. Oh my god. It's not gonna lead to good things, but it's incredible. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Did Mira of Sarah? Laya's mother just kill Karis? I'm screaming. Oh my god. Hold on. <laughs> she literally just stabbed her through the throat. An icon. A queen. I- wow. Wow. Wow? <laughs> Unbelievable. Unreal. I don't- <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I was about to start crying because Elias and Laya were about to say goodbye and she was like, wherever I am in the world, I'll always be with you or whatever. Some sappy shit that was like gonna be tragic and sad. And then her mom, her dead mom, is not dead? Hello? Why is Cook slash Mirror of Sarah the icon of this entire series? Why is she the greatest character? literally shows up to kill Karis Aturias and then shows up to prevent Elias and Laya from being separated. I think that's what's about to happen. A queen. A queen. I love her. I, I have to keep reading. Hold on. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> She's gonna take Elias's place as the soul catcher? Is that what's about to happen? Is she gonna sacrifice herself one last time for Laya? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. A few months of training for my future son-in-law. <laughs> we need to turn on some lights. It's getting it's getting dark in here. Helene learned. <laughs> Helene learned and they're making her the Empress. Helene is becoming the Empress and she is trying to undo everything that the Martial Empire did because she learned. The satisfaction I feel right now. <laughs> this is what I wanted for her. This was the redemption she needed for me to like actually like her. And now I actually like her. <laughs> oh my god, the shit she has been through in this book alone is just so sad. She has lost everyone she cares about besides Elias and Laya. Harper is gone, her sister is gone, literally her whole family. Like I- this is so sad. This is so sad. I feel so much for her right now, which is the biggest turn of events for me because I really didn't think that would happen, but I feel so much for her right now. <laughs> it's just so satisfying because like this is like the redemption that I wanted for her. It's a satisfying redemption because like she faced the consequences of her actions. Like she actually had to face the consequences of her actions and her beliefs and like who she was and what she stood for. And now she understands the repercussions of that and she understands like everything she's done and she is actively working towards fixing some of the harm that she has caused. And I just, I love a satisfying redemption arc. A good redemption arc is just so hard to pull off, I feel like, but this one's so good. I love it. <laughs> We're on the last three chapters and the last three chapters are called Elias, Helene, and Laya. He's not the slow catcher anymore, he's Elias, and she's not the blood strike anymore, she's Helene. Oh, I'm emotional. Okay. I only have three chapters left. I have to finish it. I'm gonna finish it and then I'll come back and update you all on my final thoughts.
he proposed to her. I finished it. <laughs> and he proposed to her. <laughs> with an armlet with the names of her entire family inscribed on it. And he says, I wish I could live a thousand lives so I could fall in love with you a thousand times. Goodbye. Just, that's it for me. All right. Yeah. Peace. Bye. I'm done. <laughs> Help. <laughs> that was the perfect ending. It was the perfect ending. It literally... <laughs> What a perfect ending. <laughs> they just, they're happy. <laughs> the biggest plot twist in this book is that Laia and Elias are happy and alive. <laughs> I'm so emotional. <laughs> I just can't believe it's over. I've been reading these books for so many years. The series has taken like, I think five years or so. And I just can't believe it's over. That was so good. That was so satisfying. Everything that happened with um, her mom, the lioness, incredible, incredible. I love the like theme of motherhood in this entire series. And especially in like the last two books, I loved the complexity of her relationship with her mother because well, she didn't know she was her mother at first. And when she finds out there's so much complex emotion there because she, kind of abandoned her and she wasn't necessarily a good mother because she wasn't present, but she also sacrificed like everything for her daughter and it's just so beautiful. It's so good. Oh my god, I I just, I don't have words. I'm just so happy. <laughs> it was just such a satisfying ending. I feel like that's what I just keep going back to. It was such a satisfying finale to a series. It's been a while since I've had this much satisfaction from like the last book in a series where it felt like it was a good conclusion where I didn't feel like something was missing or that it was just like kind of dragging out the story or something like that. This just tied everything together so perfectly and I'm happy. Like I'm <laughs> I'm so happy. Like, I'm sad because Darren did die, which was so depressing. So did Harper. Like, literally both Elias and Laia's brothers die, which is so tragic. And Helene got the worst end of everything. Like, everyone she cares about is dead, which is so depressing. But she still had such a satisfying, like, redemption arc. And, like, I actually like her now. Who would have thought? <laughs> but, oh my god, I just, I feel so much about these characters. I love this series so much. I want to reread it entirely like from the beginning right now. As I was reading this book all I could think about was how much I love the first book and like my experience of reading the first book and my memories that I have attached to the time I read it and everything and now I just want to go back and reread the entire series because I I miss the characters already. Like I literally just finished it and I miss the characters already. I uh, I'm so emo. <laughs> But yeah, as for this book specifically, I think I'm gonna give this probably, it's not five star for me because I think An Ember in the Ashes and Torch Against the Night are still my two favorites in the series. Those are definitely five stars for me. I think this one is gonna be four and a half. So still very close. I still really, really loved it, but it's definitely more of like four and a half stars. And that's only because I think it was like a little bit too long. There were just parts of it where it dragged out a little bit too much, I think. Not that it was slow by any means because it was just like constant action from like chapter to chapter nonstop, but it did like drag out a little bit more. I feel like it could have been a little bit shorter, but besides that, I have no complaints. I am so happy that my favorite characters are alive, first of all, and that they're getting married and they're happy. Like what, what more could I ask for? <laughs> But yeah, I loved this. I'm so glad I read it. I am so glad that this series exists. I love Laia. She's still one of my favorite main characters in all of YA. Elias is also one of my favorite main characters in all of YA, and I think they forever will be. They hold such a special place in my heart, and they forever will. I just, I love this series. And if you haven't read it, um, I can't imagine that you'd still be watching this video, but if you happen to be, read the series. I know I just like spoiled everything for you, but like still Still read the series if you haven't read it yet or go reread the series which is what I really want to do right now <laughs> but um, I think that's where I'm gonna end this video I am very emotional I feel like I need to sit in these feelings and process some of what I'm feeling right now for a little while and I don't know how long it's gonna take me to be able to read another book because I'm gonna be like hungover from this one for a while because it made me feel so much <laughs> but nonetheless I hope you all enjoyed watching this video um, and watching me just slowly lose my mind and then regain 
gain it back <laughs> throughout the process of reading this book. I hope that it was entertaining for you even if you haven't read this book series. <laughs> if you really haven't read this book series and you watched this whole video, please let me know because I'd find that so amusing. If you just wanted to see me like slowly lose it because like I feel like I'd watch someone slowly lose it. I feel like that'd be pretty entertaining. <laughs> but if you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye.